Hello there friends, it's Ashley here from the Loopy Lamb and thelupylamb.com and thanks so much for stopping by the channel today. It is week 22 of the 2023 Amigurumi Advent Calendar Crochet Along. And this week, we're going to be starting part one of a three-part doll outfit project that I can't wait to show you. This is the most requested career outfit for a doll that I've received to date from participants of this year's and last year's Crochet Along. So I hope that you're gonna be as excited as I am about this. This project. This project makes a great gift for children that are aspiring to be firefighters. This is a quick project and again it's broken down into three different parts. This week we're going to be starting with his helmet. The helmet is an easy project and over on the written version of the pattern that's free on my blog thelupylamb.com you can find some customization tips for the emblem here if you're not a fan of doing embroidery. So make sure to head on over to the blog and I've linked to that in the description box if you're looking for other alternatives to embroidering on the emblem. But if you're fine with embroidery I'm going to show you how to do that here today as well. So if you're ready to get started, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to this channel. And let's hop on into covering what materials you'll need to follow along with today's tutorial. To follow along with today's tutorial where we're making a firefighter's helmet for our Advent Adam dolls, you're going to need the following materials. You're going to need a three and a half millimeter or E crochet hook or whatever size hook that you've been using throughout the crochet along to match the gauge given in the pattern so far. If you need to find the gauge information, I've linked to the free written version of this pattern in the description box below and you can find the gauge information there. You're going to need worsted weight yarn in two different colors. I'm using We Crochet's Bravo worsted weight line in uh, the color almond for my main color. You can see here I've used a yellow color here which is actually called canary, uh, but unfortunately this color is far too saturated for us to see the stitches properly on video. So we're going to be using the almond color to create our helmet today. You're also going to need a uh, secondary color which we'll use for our emblem here on the front of the hat and I'm using Dove Heather for that today. You're also going to need a stitch marker, a tapestry or yarn needle, a pair of scissors, and some black embroidery thread. So let me clear off my workspace here and we'll jump on in and start creating our firefighter helmet for our Advent Adam dolls. So to start off making our firefighter helmet for our doll, we're going to start using our main color. For me here today, we're using the color almond just so we can see it a little bit better. But if you want to use the color I used in my original sample, that is the color canary, which is a bright yellow color. To start, we're going to need to create a magic circle. So we're going to lay the tail end of our yarn across our palm and pin it down with our thumb. Then grabbing the end of the yarn that is still attached to the ball, we're going to wrap it around our fingers, around the back, and bring it around to the front. And then we're gonna cross the yarn over itself to create an X like this. Then while we're holding tension on that yarn, we're going to flip our hand over, bringing the yarn with us. And then I'm going to pin the yarn down between my ring finger and my middle finger here. Now this next step you can do with your fingers, um, but I'm gonna show you with a crochet hook here. I'm going to insert my hook under the first strand and over the second. Then I'm going to use my hook to pull the first strand out and under the first, and then I'm going to twist my hook. Now when you twist it, it's going to create another cross in the yarn, which we're, is going to help us with our next step here. And so we're going to take our hook, and do you see this little strand of yarn here which was pinned between our fingers? I'm going to slide my hook under that yarn, and I'm going to pull that through the loop on my hook. And now I can remove my fingers from my magic circle. And then you're going to pull your yarn tail out from your magic circle and you're ready to start crocheting. So our first round of our helmet here says we're going to work six single crochets into the magic ring. So I'll show you how to do that now, but make sure that you have your stitch marker handy because we're going to be using that in just a few moments. So to work our first single crochet, we're going to insert a hook into the magic ring, yarn over hook, and pull up a loop. 
You should have two loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over again and pull that yarn through both loops on our hook. And that is our first single crochet. Now you might notice that I, I have two strands here in my hand. And what I'm doing is I'm crocheting over the yarn that makes our magic ring and my yarn tail. So that way I can get a nice snug um, round one when I pull my yarn tail later. So you're going to work over that tail. So now we're going to work five more single crochets into this magic ring. So inserting our hook into the ring, yarn over and pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. That's your second cro single crochet completed. And now we have to do four more. So back into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Okay, that's our third. And we're going to keep going with this single crochet until we have six single crochets. So we're at four, five, and six. Now, if you didn't keep track, how you can count your stitches is you will turn your piece up so you can see these little V's across the top of your work and you'll count all of those V's starting from where we started. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. We never count the yarn on our hook and now I know I have six V's. If you have more than that, you'll need to pull your yarn to undo a stitch in order to make sure that you have the proper amount of stitches, right? Because you need to have six stitches at the end of this round. So now that I have my first round completed, I'm going to pull that yarn tail that we were working over. I'm gonna pull that tail until it cinches up the center nice and snug. And this is what it should look like. And now we're ready to start round two. For round two, we're going to work what's called a single crochet increase into each stitch around. Now single crochet increases when you work two single crochets into the same stitch. So working into this first stitch here, we're going to insert our hook under both loops. So again, if you twist your work so you can see the V, there's a loop close to you and a loop furthest away from you. When you're working into uh, a stitch, if it's not indicated otherwise, it is assumed you are going to work under both loops. So that first stitch can sometimes be a little tight, but you're gonna insert your hook under both loops of that stitch. Then you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Then yarn over and pull through both loops. And that's your first single crochet completed. And now you're gonna take your stitch marker and place it into that stitch you just created under both loops and not mine are a locking stitch marker, so I'm gonna lock it in place so it doesn't fall out. And we're gonna move this stitch marker up as we progress through the piece. Now, as I said, we're going to do an increase into each stitch and we've only done one single crochet. So that means we have to do another one back in that same stitch. So inserting our hook back into that same stitch, we're doing another single crochet into that same stitch. And that's your first single crochet increase completed. Now, working into the next stitch, we're going to do that again. Two single crochets done in the same stitch. So into the stitch, single crochet, back into the same stitch, and a single crochet. All right, so that's our second single crochet increase, and we'll do that again together into the next stitch single crochet into the same stitch and single crochet. So if you'd like to pause your video and do these last three single crochet increases on your own, at the end of this round, you should have 12 stitches. So I'll meet you back here in just a moment to show you how we're moving on to round three. All right, so I'm at the end of round two and this is what your piece should look like. If you count your stitches, those Vs all around the top, you should have 12 stitches. Now moving into round three, we have a pattern repeat that we need to do. So I'm gonna move this stitch marker out of the way because I need to be able to work into that first stitch. So our repeat is one single crochet in the first stitch, two single crochets or a single crochet increase into the next. And we need to do that six times. So I'm gonna show you how we'll do that. So we're going to work one single crochet into that first stitch. 
And now that I've done my first single crochet, I'm going to grab that stitch marker again and place it back into that stitch. Now working into this next stitch here, we're doing our single crochet increase. So we're working two single crochets into that stitch. So there's our first stitch back into the same stitch. And here's our second single crochet. And that's our first pattern repeat completed. And we need to do this five more times. So I'll show you again. We're going to work one single crochet into the first stitch. And then we're going to work two single crochets or a single crochet increase into the next. So there's the first part of our single crochet increase and back into that same stitch with single crochet again. And that's our next pattern repeat. So we're going to do that four more times and I'll show you how to do that one more time together. One single crochet into the first stitch and a single crochet increase into the next. So there's our first stitch back into the same stitch and here is our second. All right, so if you'd like to pause your video and continue to work the remaining three repeats of one single crochet in the first stitch, so single crochet increase into the next, I'll meet you back here at the end of the round to show you how we're moving into round four. At the end of round three, you should have 18 single crochet stitches. All right, so we are moving into round four. I'm gonna move my stitch marker out of the way here. And for round four, we have a, uh, another pattern repeat, but things are shifted slightly so our uh, increases don't stack on top of each other. So it's going to be a little different this round. So we're going to work one single crochet into this first stitch. So there's our first single crochet, putting my hook down to grab my stitch marker and placing it into that stitch. Now we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. All right, and now we're going to begin our pattern repeat. And this repeat we're going to do five times. So I'll show you that now. We're going to place one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So there's one, and there's two. And now we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. All right, and that's our first pattern repeat. So our repeat is two single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. So I'll show you again, one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So there's one, two, and then we're going to do a single crochet increase into the next. All right, and that's our next pattern repeat. So if you'd like to do this three more times, we'll do two single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. If you'd like to pause your video and do that three more times, I'll meet you back here at the end of the round and I'll show you what we're going to be doing with this last unworked stitch that you'll have after doing your repeats. I'll meet you back here in just a moment. All right, so I'm back. I just finished the last of my repeats that needed to be done and we have one stitch left to be worked in this round. We're just going to work one single crochet into that last stitch. At the end of this round, you should have 24 stitches. Now we're moving into round five. Let's get the stitch marker out of the way. And if we have another pattern repeat, we're going to do three single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. So to do that, we're going to work one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. So there's our first stitch. Again, we move up our stitch marker. And then we'll work one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And now we'll work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. All 
and that's our first pattern repeat. And we'll be doing this a total of six times, so that means we have five more repeats to go. So I'll show you that again. Work one single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And now we'll work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And that's our next pattern repeat. So if you'd like to pause your video and do this four more times, that three single crochets followed by a single crochet increase, at the end of this round you should have 30 single crochets. So if you'd like, your pause, you've, if you'd like to pause your video and meet me back here in just a moment, I'll sh meet you back here at the end of the round to show you how we're moving into round six. All right, so we're moving into round six now. We're gonna move that stitch marker out of the way. And we're going to start round six off with one single crochet into each of the first two stitches. So let's work that first single crochet together here and place our stitch marker into that stitch. And then we'll work another single crochet into the next stitch here. So there's our two single crochets. And now we'll work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And now we have a pattern repeat that we need to do five times. So we're going to work one single crochet into each of the first four stitches, followed by a single crochet increase. And I'll show you what that looks like now. So working one single crochet into each of the first four stitches. So there's one, two, and four. And now we'll work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And now we'll do that again. That's our first repeat completed. We'll do it again. One single crochet into each of the first four stitches. Followed by a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And that's our second pattern repeat completed. So if you'd like to pause your video and do three more repeats of the four single crochets followed by a single crochet increase, you should have two stitches left to be worked. So I'll meet you back here in just a moment and show you what we're doing in those last two stitches. All right, so I just finished my last pattern repeat of those four single crochets followed by an increase, and we have those two stitches here that need to be worked still in this round. And what we're going to do is we're going to work one single crochet into each of those remaining stitches. At the end of this round, you should have 36 stitches around your piece. All right, now we're moving into row, uh, round seven here. So let's move our stitch marker out of the way. And now we're going to work uh, another pattern repeat, repeat, but we're going to do this six times. So this repeat is five single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. So to do that, we're going to work our first single crochet into that stitch. Move up our stitch marker here. And now we're going to do four more single crochets. So one into each of the next four stitches. There's one. All right, so now that we have our five single crochets completed, we're going to work a single crochet increase. So again, into this next stitch here, we're working those two single crochets into the same stitch. And that's our first pattern repeat completed. Now we have to do this five more times. So working one single crochet into each of the next five stitches. All right, there's our five single crochets, and now we'll work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. All right, and that's our second pattern repeat completed. So if you'd like to pause your video and do this four more times, at the end of this round, you should have 42 stitches. I'll meet you back here in just a moment to show you how we're moving on to round eight. All right, so now we're moving on to round eight. Let's move that stitch marker out of the way. 
And now we're going to start round eight by working one single crochet into each of these first three stitches here. So let's work that first single crochet and move up your stitch marker. And then we'll place one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So now that we have those three single crochets completed, we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And now we're going to do a pattern repeat a total of five times. And that repeat is six single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. So I'll show you how to do that. We'll work one single crochet into each of the next six stitches. So there's one, three, and six, followed by a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And that is our first pattern repeat completed. And I'll show you that an, uh, one more time together. We'll work one single crochet into each of these next six stitches. There's one. Three. and six. Now that we have our six single crochets completed, we're working a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And that's our second pattern repeat completed. So if you'd like to pause your video and work that repeat three more times, you should have three stitches in this round that will need to be worked. And I'll meet you back here after doing my repeats to show you what we're doing in those last three stitches. All right, so we have three stitches left to be worked here in round eight, and we're going to work one single crochet into each of those stitches. Now at the end of round eight, you should have 48 stitches. And so now we're ready to move into round nine. For round nine, we're gonna move that stitch marker up, and we have a uh, repeat that we're going to do four times in this round. And that repeat is 11 single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. So I'll show you that now. We'll work our first single crochet into that first stitch and move up our stitch marker. So that's one of our 11 stitches we need to do. So we're going to do 10 more single crochets, one in each of the next 10 stitches. So here's our second stitch. And we're just going to keep going, working one single crochet into each of these stitches until we have a total of 11 stitches worked. All right, so now that we have 11 single crochets completed, we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. So that's our first pattern repeat completed, and we need to do this three more times, and I'll show you how to do this one more time together. We're going to work one single crochet into each of the next 11 stitches. There's one. Three, seven. All right, so now that I have another 11 single crochets completed, I'm going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. All right, so we have to do two more repeats now. So if you'd like to pause your video and do two more repeats of 11 single crochets followed by a single crochet increase, I'll meet you back here in just a moment to show you how we're going to move on to round 10. At the end of round nine, you should have 52 single crochet stitches. 
All right, so we're moving into round 10. And now rounds 10 through 16 are all done the same way. We're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. So when we're doing that, we're just going to work our first single crochet in the first stitch, move up our stitch marker, and then we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rounds 10 through 16, working one single crochet into each stitch around, I'll meet you back here at the end of round 16 to show you how we're moving into round 17, where we're going to start building the brim for our doll's firefighter helmet. All right, so I'm back and I just finished rounds 10 through 16 and your piece should look like this. When we stopped increasing and we just are working those one single crochets into each stitch around, your piece should kind of cup up this way that you see here. So now we're moving into round 17. Now for round 17, we're going to be working in the front loop only. To identify where your front loop only, take a look at your piece of the tops of your stitches. You'll see that there are two strands to each V. This strand that's furthest from you is called the back loop, and the one that's closest to you is called the front loop. So all of the stitches in this round will be worked in the front loop only, and I'll show you how we're going to actually do that crocheting. So let's move our stitch marker out of the way, and we're going to start round 17 off by working one single crochet into each of the first two stitches, and we're working those in the front loop only. Now, when we're working in the front loop only, we're going to take our hook and come up under that loop and push up through the middle of the stitch. Okay, and I'll show you that again. Again, we're working under the front loop only, so we're coming up under that front loop and through the center of the stitch. And then we'll just single crochet as normal. And don't forget to move up your stitch marker. Now the reason we're doing this front loop only is because working into the front loop only will cause our uh, row to start flaring outwards, which we want for the brim of our hat. So that's why we're working all these stitches in the front loop only. So working under the front loop of the next stitch, we're working one single crochet. Okay, and as I already said, we're working all of our stitches of this round in the front loop only. So now we have a pattern repeat that we need to do, and it's a single crochet increase followed by six single crochets, and we're going to do that seven times. So again, working in the front loop only. So we're going to do a single crochet increase in the next stitch, so front loop only, then single crochet increase. All right, we do all of our stitches the exact same way as we did previously. We're just working into the front loop only. Okay, so now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next six stitches. Again, front loop only, six single crochets. So there's one, three, and six. So now that we've got that increase and six single crochets completed, that is our first pattern repeat. Now we need to do this six more times. So I'll show you that again. We're going to do a single crochet increase into the next stitch in the front loop only. And then we're going to do front loop only, six single crochets, that's one single crochet into each of the next six stitches. So now that is our second repeat and we need to do that five more times. So if you'd like to pause your video and do that single crochet increase followed by six single crochets, all worked in the front loop only, five more times. I'll meet you back here at the end of the round to show you how we're going to finish off the round because there will be one stitch left that needs to be worked. I'll meet you back here in just a moment. All right, so I'm back and I just finished my last repeat of those uh, single crochet increase followed by the six single crochets and we have one stitch left to be worked. And in this last stitch, we're going to work a single crochet increase again in the front loop only. So front loop only and then single crochet increase. 
At the end of this round, you should have 60 single crochets. Now, if you take a look at your piece, you can see that our last round here is starting to flare out and that's exactly what it should be doing at this point. So now we're moving into round 18. So we're going to be starting the shaping of our brim to give it that really distinct fireman's hat brim where it flares out more so at the back than at the front and it does that to protect the neck. So we're going to work one single crochet into each of the first three stitches and we're working back under both loops of each stitch. So here's our first single crochet. And then we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So there's our third single crochet. Now we're going to do a stitch called the half double crochet and we're going to do that once in each of the next two stitches. To do a half double crochet, we're going to yarn over hook and insert our hook into the stitch. Then we're going to yarn over hook and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. And that is our completed half double crochet stitch. So we're going to do that again. We're going to yarn over and insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Again, there's those three loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. And that's your next half double crochet completed. Now we have a pattern repeat that we're going to do three times. It's three double crochet stitches followed by a double crochet increase. So to do a double crochet, we're going to yarn over and insert our hook into the next stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. You've got three loops on your hook. And you're gonna yarn over and pull through the first two loops. Okay, then you have two loops remaining on your hook. Then you're gonna yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops and that's your first double crochet completed. So now we need to do that stitch one more time in each of the next two stitches. So yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, and we'll do that one more time in the next stitch. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And that's your third double crochet completed. So now we're going to do a double crochet increase and it's very similar to the single crochet increase in that we're working two of the same stitch into the next stitch. So that means we're doing two double crochets into this next stitch. So yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we're going to go back into that same, same stitch. So yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that's our first repeat of that three double crochets followed by a double crochet increase. So we're gonna do this two more times. Double crochet into the next three stitches. So there's one, two, and three. Followed by a double crochet increase into the next stitch. So there's our first part, back into the same stitch, and here's our second part of the increase. All right, we're gonna do that one more time. One double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Here's three. Followed by a double crochet increase into the next. Okay, and now we're done our repeat for now. And now we're going to work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. There is one, two, and three. 
now we're going to work a half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. So again, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. And then we'll do that again in the next stitch, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. And now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next eight stitches. All right, so here's one. All right, so I've got my eight single crochets and now we have another pattern repeat we need to follow. And that repeat is a single crochet increase in the first stitch followed by one single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. And we need to do that repeat three times. So again, we're gonna start with that single crochet increase. There's our single crochet increase. And then we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. All right, so that's our first repeat. We've got the increase followed by our seven single crochets. Now we're going to do that two more times. Single crochet increase into the first stitch. And then one single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. All right, and we're going to do that one more time. Single crochet increase into the first stitch. And then one single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. Now we're going to do a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And now you should have five stitches left to be worked in this round. And we're just going to work one single crochet into each of those remaining five stitches. At the end of this round, you should have 67 stitches. And now we're moving into round 19. We're going to move that stitch marker out of the way and we're going to work one single crochet into that first stitch. And then we're going to move up our stitch marker. And we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And now we're going to work a half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. So yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And then again into the next stitch, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and yarn over and pull through all three loops. And now we have a pattern repeat we're going to do. We're going to do four double crochets followed by a double crochet increase. And we'll do that now. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. All right, that's your first double crochet. Now we're going to do that three more times. All right, so we've got our three double crochets. Now we're going to do a double crochet increase into the next stitch. All right, so that's our first repeat completed and we're going to do that two more times. So one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. followed by a double crochet increase into the next stitch. All 
Okay, and one more time, we're going to do one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. followed by a double crochet increase into the next stitch. Now we're going to work one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. Okay, and now we're going to work one half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. So there's our first. And there is our second. You can see that we've got that shaping happening to create the back of the hat. And so now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next three stitches. All right, and now we're going to do one slip stitch into each of the remaining 38 stitches. So I'm gonna show you how to do that slip stitch. We're going to insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then you're gonna pull that loop through the loop on your hook, and that's your slip stitch completed. I'll show you that again. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then pull that loop through the loop on your hook and that's your slip stitch completed. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one slip stitch into each of the remaining stitches in this round, at the end of this round, you should have 70 stitches. So meet me back here at the end of this round and I'll show you how we're going to be finishing off here on the main body of our fireman's helmet. All right, so we're at the end of the round here. I've worked all of my stitches and I have 70 stitches at the end of round 19. So we're ready to finish off this part of our hat. And so we're gonna grab our scissors and I need to get a, going to need to cut a yarn tail of at least four to six inches here. And you're going to need to grab your tapestry needle. Now I've got my hook still attached, so I'm just going to pull that yarn all the way through my last stitch. All right, then I'm going to grab my tapestry needle here and thread my yarn tail onto my tapestry needle. So what we're going to be doing here to finish off our hat is called, it's a technique called the invisible finish or it's also called the invisible join. And I do have a tutorial here on the channel if you'd like to see that done as well, but I will show you here um, how it will work in this project. So we're going to move our stitch marker out of the way because we won't need it any longer. And we're going to take our needle and we're going to insert it under both loops from front to back through the second stitch of the round, all right? So we're skipping the first stitch and inserting our needle under both loops of that second stitch. Then we're going to grab our needle and pull it all the way through the stitch until our yarn tail lays flat along the front loop of the first stitch. Because what we're doing with this technique is we're duplicating that first stitch to round out the edges of our hat. Because when we are working in a continuous spiral the way that we are, there's usually this little step between the last stitch and the first stitch. And this technique helps to even that out and eliminate that altogether. So I'm gonna hold tension in the back of my project with my fingers here, so that way um, that stay, yarn in the front stays where I want it to be. And then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to insert it through the top of this, the last stitch of the round. So again, we're skipping that first stitch, going to the last stitch, and I'm going up through the top of the stitch and under the back loop only. Okay, so with the slip stitches, they tend to want to turn forward. So that's why, why it looks like it's facing this way instead of upwards. But it's just because it's those slip stitches naturally want to turn towards you. So what we're doing again, we're going to, through the top of the stitch under the back loop only, and we're pulling our yarn through that last stitch. And we're going to give that yarn tail a tug 
until it evens out both sides and it looks just like the first stitch of the round. And then at this point, you can just weave in your ends as you normally would for both your tail from your magic circle and your finished end from finishing off your hat. And if you take a look at where we finished, it's almost hard, almost impossible to tell where we finished off our hat. So uh, I'm going to switch over to our other color here. For me is that dove heather, and we're going to create the emblem that's gonna go onto the front of our fireman's hat. All right, I'll be back in just a jiff. All right, so I'm back and we're ready to start the emblem on the that will go on the front of our fireman's hat. And again, we're using this dove gray heather to make it appear like it's a silver or a light gray. And we're going to need to start this piece with a slip knot. So I'm going to lay the yarn tail, or tail of my yarn across my palm, pin it down with my thumb. And just like our magic circle, we're going to wrap the yarn around our fingers bringing it over itself to create that X. Then we're going to hold tension in the yarn and turn our hand. And then I'm going to pin the yarn between my ring finger and my middle finger here. Now you can do this with your finger or your hook, but I'll use my hook just because it's easier for you to see at home. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert our hook under the first strand and over the second. Looks a lot like the magic circle, doesn't it? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that second strand all the way out under the first strand, and we're just gonna keep going. We're gonna keep pulling, and as we're pulling with our hook, we're going to remove our fingers from the yarn, and then keep pulling up on your hook and down with your hands on the yarn, and then you've got your slip knot. So grabbing the end of the yarn that's still attached to the ball. We're going to give that a tug to bring our slip knot up to your hook and we're ready to get started with our first round. So this project is work or this part of the project is worked in turned rows and we're going to start with a chain of eight. To do a chain we're going to yarn over hook and pull that yarn through the loop on our hook and that creates your first chain. And we're going to continue to do this yarn over and pull through the loop on our hook until we have eight chains. So we're up to two now, yarn over, pull through, there's three. All right, so we have eight chains here and you can double check your count by starting to count where your slip stitch is or slip knot is located and counting the Vs from the slip knot to your hook. You never count the yarn on your hook as a chain and counting all the Vs, you should have eight chains. So we're going to start row one by working a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So again, we don't count that yarn on our hook. We're counting over from hook over to the opposite side and we're counting one and two, okay? So I'm gonna put my finger next to that second chain here so I know where I'm putting my hook and I'm going to insert my hook into that chain. Okay, then we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Two loops are on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through two. And that's your single crochet completed. And we're just going to work one single crochet into each of these chains across. So again, into the center of the next V, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops. All right, so we're all, uh, we're pretty much expert at single crochet at this point. So we're just going to keep working those one single crochet into each of these chains across. At the end of this row, you should have seven single crochets. All right, so this is what your piece should look like at this point. We've got our seven single crochets, and now we're ready to move into row two. We're going to yarn over hook and pull through the loop on our hook to chain one, and then we're turning our work. That chain one is called a turning chain, and we're going to do that, and it brings our yarn up to the height of the hook, or the height of the stitch that we're going to be doing in the first, um, first stitch here. So when we're working in rows, we're going to, just like in rounds, we're working under both loops of the stitch, and we're gonna start in that first stitch, insert our hook, and then we just single crochet as we normally do. 
So when we're working in rows, we have that added step of chaining up and turning our work, but the stitches work pretty much the same. So working into each stitch across, we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch across. Okay, so we still have seven single crochets at the end of row two. So rows three and four are both done the same way. You're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. And then we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch across. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rows three and four, working one single crochet into each stitch across, I'll meet you back here at the end of row uh, four to show you how we move into row five. All right, so we're just finishing here uh, row four and we're moving into row five. And to start row five, we're chaining up one and turning our work. To start row five, we're going to work one single crochet into that first stitch. And we're going to work a half double crochet into the next stitch. So yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Now we're going to work one single crochet into the next stitch. And into this next stitch here, we're going to work three double crochets into the same stitch. So yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. And that's your first double crochet completed. And we're going to do that two more times into the same stitch. All right, so now that we've got those three double crochets in the same stitch, we're going to work a single crochet into the next stitch. Half double crochet into the next. And a single crochet into that last stitch there. At the end of row five, you should have nine stitches. Now moving into row six, we're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. Now this is the right side of our fabric here. This is traditionally the wrong side, but in um, the at the end of row six, we're going to work on a trim and you're going to see that this will become the right side of our fabric. Okay, so we're going to work one single crochet into that first stitch and a half double crochet into the next. Now we'll work one single crochet into that next stitch. And a half double crochet into the next. In this next stitch here, we're going to work three double crochets into the next stitch. So there's one. Back into the same stitch. There's two. Back into the same stitch. And there's three. Now we're going to work a half double crochet into the next stitch. A single crochet into the next. half double crochet into the next stitch and single crochet into the last. At the end of this row, you should have 11 stitches. And let me just put this down for a second so you can see this is what your piece should look like so far. All right. So now we're going to chain one and we're going to turn our piece so we're working down this short side of the emblem. All right, and now we're going to work two single crochets into this first stitch here. There's one and there's two. And now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next four rows. So 
So there's one. And we're just putting it into the end of the rows. There's no like perfect uh, way to do this. You're just going to try to do your best working down the side of the row. All right, and then we're going to work three single crochets into this corner stitch here. Now this can be a little tight, so if it's easier for you to go into the top of the stitch, that's totally fine. But um, if you can get into the uh, back loop of that stitch, that's ideal. Mine's not really cooperating with me, so I'm just gonna work into the top of that stitch. And there's my three single crochets. So that those three single crochets, as you can see, kind of like turned my work for me because now we're going to be working along the bottom side of our work. And we really want to be working into those remaining loops that were left at the end or when we created our foundation chain in our row one. So working into each of the next stitches, we're going to work into the next five stitches working one single crochet. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. Now there's one stitch left to be worked here and this is our corner stitch. So working into that corner stitch, you're going to work three single crochets to create your corner. So into that stitch, three single crochets. One, two, and three. So again, those three single crochets kind of like turn your piece. And now we're working up the other short side of our piece. So we're gonna work one single crochet into each of the ends of the rows here. And I'm working over my tail. You don't have to do that if you'd prefer to weave them in. So there's one, two, three, and four. So, oops, that was in the same stitch. Let's move that up a little bit. There we go. So now I'm up to the other corner here. And in that corner, we're going to work another three single crochets. So there's one, two, and three. And now we're going to be working along the top of our piece here now. So we're gonna work one single crochet into each of the next nine stitches. All right, so we've worked one single crochet in each stitch across the top, and now we're back into this last stitch here, and we're going to work one single crochet in the same stitch we started in, okay? Because that finishes off our corner. All right, so now we're going to join our last stitch to our first stitch with a slip stitch. We're gonna insert into that first stitch there, yarn over, pull up the loop, then pull that loop through the loop on our hook. And then you're gonna cut a tail, yarn tail now to finish off, leaving at least, I like to go more than I actually really need to to make sure I've got enough. I usually do at least 10 to 15 inches here, cut my tail, and I'm going to pull that yarn all the way through that last slip stitch here. And then I'm going to give that a tug to tighten up my slip stitch. Oops, <laughs> went for a little flight. So this is what our piece looks like now. And uh, what we're gonna do now is we, we can embroider our uh, letters onto our hat. Now I embroidered a FD for fire department on my original sample, but you can feel free to uh, embroider your child's initials. Uh, you can use little embellishments like I've seen felt stars put on these. You can do uh, pr pretty much whatever you'd set your mind to here or just let your creati creativity be your guide. But I will show you how to do the FD for fire department if that's what you'd like to do. And for, to do that, you're going to need your completed emblem, your black embroidery thread and your tapestry needle. All right, so we're going to uh, embroider FD onto our emblem here. And so you're going to use your black embroidery thread. And I like to, again, I use way more than I need to, just because I'd rather have more than not enough. So I'm probably, this is probably, I'm not sure, let's say 
20 inches or so doubled, right? So I've got it held double here and then I'm just going to cut the end. There we go. And set the um, embroidery thread aside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread one end of the embroidery thread onto my needle. And then I'm just going to grab both ends and make sure the needle is in the center of my embroidery thread. And then I'm going to tie the two ends together with an overhand knot here. I like to do it double just to be on the safe side. Okay. So with the right side facing you, and remember on this piece, it is the right side is the traditional wrong side. And I'm going to take my embroidery thread and I'm going to go from the wrong, the wrong side, pick a stitch where I want to come out, and I'm going to come out the right side. Now on the back here, I'm going to leave a little loop because I'm going to... Um, work into that. You can knot it here at this point if you'd like. Um, mine probably won't, well, it will come out. But um, if your knot's big enough for it not to come out, you don't need to do that. But I'll leave a little loop here for later. So anyways, we're, we've got the front of our emblem here and I'm going to come up in a straight line, find a stitch or even just a point where it looks like it's completely straight line ahead or up top. And I'm going to put my needle into the emblem and pull it all the way through. Now, when you're working double like this, you have to make sure that you're managing both sides of, or both strands to make sure that they're even, because if you have one that's up higher than the other, and I'll show you that like this, then it's going to look sloppy. So you wanna make sure that you're pulling evenly on both strands. So we've got the um, main part of the um, F here, and we're going to start working across to create our actual F. So I'm gonna do the top strand first and I'm still holding that loop on the back in case you're wondering. And depending on how far, how big you want your letter to be, you don't have to come out too far. I don't want it to be that big. So I'm gonna come out a little ways away and then I'm gonna come back in here at the top in the same stitch where we did the top of the first strand we embroidered. So going back into that, Going to back down into that stitch. And again, making sure that we've got both strands maintained. All right, so on the back here, just because this is how I like to do it, I'm gonna go into that loop. And it will now be secured as I continue on with my embroidery. So now that I have that done, I'm going to come down. I can either come out through here or here. I like to come out on my right hand side here. Pull that tight. And then I'm going to go, You, I don't recommend going in the middle of the two strands because it will split the strands and it won't look great. So you can come in, I like to move the strand over to the side a little bit and go in where the strand would go directly underneath. Again, I'm not a professional <laughs> embroiderer here. If you have uh, preferred or even a better way to embroider, you go ahead and do that. I'm just showing you how I like to do it. There we go. So there is my F, and now I'm working, going to go over to the other side of my emblem here to make my D. I'm going to come over here near the top. I like it to be even with the top of my F and then come straight down. Okay, now um, the D, it's, um, you could try to make a more rounded shape. I didn't try because it's um, a lot more complicated. I just try to make it um, a, almost like a triangle on its side. So where we've come out here, I'm going to come out into where I want the center point of my D to be. So that's going to be right here and pull that out. Sorry, I keep catching the yarn tail on the back there. And then we're going to come back down into the bottom of the start of our D. Okay. 
then you can either come back out here or up here. And I'm just going to come back out through the center here. And then I'm going to come bring my needle back into the top of my D right here and pull that through. Again, you can see that my thread got on uh, even there. So I'm just going to give that a little tug and that's it. That's how you embroider the FD on it. And then um, it, again, it's not the prettiest on the back, but it's going to be sewn onto the hat. So who really cares? <laughs> really? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, you can either weave this in or you can just tie a little knot in the back. I'm going to do a little knot. Again, it's hidden in the back. So who cares? And then I'm just going to cut my embroidery thread and set the embroidery thread aside. So that's it there. And then all we have to do now is to sew our emblem to the front of our hat. So how you can tell the front of the hat from the back of the hat is here is my hat, my completed hat here. And this elongated section here on my right, that is the back of the hat. And the complete opposite side is going to be the front. So I now that I've located the front of the hat, I'm going to have the front of the hat face me. And just to make it a little easier for you folks to see, I'm going to flatten my hat. Okay, you don't have to do this step. I'm just doing it for you to be able to see what we're doing. So I'm going to now take my um, um, goodness, my emblem, I'm going to cut this little yarn tail and get that out of the way. And now I'm going to take my emblem and I'm going to place it centered in the hat. So because my hat is flat, you can see where the elongated section is on the back. And so for it to be centered in the front, it needs to be in the center, the opposite side in, of the center point in the back. So using that, I'm just going to line my emblem up there. That looks good to me. Then using my embroidery thread, or goodness, my um, tapestry needle here. I'm going to thread it onto the yarn tail. And holding this in place, I'm just going to sew this to the front of the hat. Now, if you want to have the V's of your stitches showing, which I always like to do because it to me, it just looks so much nicer. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that. So if you flip your emblem up and you can see the back sides of your stitches, the backs of the single crochets have these little loops, right? These little horizontal loops. And you're just going to pick up those loops on the back side instead of sewing through your actual um, tops of your stitches. And by doing that, you're still securing your piece to your project, but you're going to have these beautiful stitches visible and it's going to look great. So again, you're just going to find those loops on the back and do your best to work all the way around the piece. Now, when I'm identifying stitches to go into on the hat, I want to find stitches that are directly underneath the spot that I just went into on the back of the emblem. Because if I were to pick stitches just outside that part uh, or the edge of the emblem, you will see those stitches. And so this kind of makes it look like it's not even stitched on. It is a little bit of a longer process, but the end result is absolutely, absolutely worth it. So that's it. Once you're finished sewing on your emblem, you will weave in your ends and you will be all set to put your firefighter's helmet on your amigurumi doll. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to this channel. If you like free crochet patterns, please check out my blog, theloopylam.com, where we've got over a hundred free crochet patterns, many of which have step-by-step -step video tutorials just like this one. If you have any questions or comments, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Please leave them in the comment section below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching friends. Happy hooking and I'll see you next time.